So recently I came across a picture of myself from six years ago and y'all, I had some rough feelings about it. Um, I'll share it here now with you. Yeah, so at that time in my life, I was around 300 pounds. I was dealing with a lot of health issues. I was anemic because I was having a lot of hormonal menstrual issues. I basically had a period that wouldn't stop for a long time. I don't even remember how long. Um, and I also just was living in a bad environment. You know, I wasn't in a very good relationship. Um, my father was dying as well. And I also, I mean, the year prior I had broken my arm. So I had put on a good deal of weight during that time because I really couldn't do anything. It was so debilitating on top of the other health issues I had. Oh my God. And now looking at that, you know, how I felt at that time, how crazy I was and, and looking at myself now, it's kind of jarring for me to look back at pictures or videos of myself and to see where I was at then versus now. Um, but for those of you who've been watching me a long time, I mean, you've seen me transform in many different ways over the years, but for those of you who may be newer to interacting with me, seeing my videos, I thought it would be important to share this, especially in terms of talking about kind of my um, weight loss journey and kind of struggles I've had with that throughout my life as um, a person. Uh, I don't know when I first became overweight exactly. I know it was pretty early on in my childhood. I started to use food as a coping mechanism. Um, I came from a family with some of you know I've talked about before. My father was morbidly obese. Um, I think at the highest weight he ranged around over 600 pounds. He did have weight loss surgery, um, but he was never really able to heal his relationship with food completely. And so food was kind of in my home, this uh, way of expressing love. And there were always good memories associated with food. And of course, I don't wanna get into all of the things that I went through as a child, but everybody has difficult things that they go through and different ways they end up coping. And for me, food became this kind of comfort thing. I also think I had pretty poor nutrition, so I ate a lot to try and compensate for that. And I think through most of my life, um, until becoming, you know, an adult, probably not until in the past couple of years did nutrition start to be more important to me but anyway um don't take that for granted i'll say that as well because it impacts everything else in your life if you don't have adequate nutrition your nothing in your body is going to operate properly um so yeah, I spent most of my young years, um, teenage years, being fat, being overweight, um, dealing with all the things that young women who are, you know, overweight deal with. You know, I was also pretty crazy in general, like in terms of how I saw things, how my mind worked. Um, and it's hard for me to look back sometimes. I don't like to, but it also is good in terms of looking at myself now and the fact that I have made progress in my life to change myself for the better. Um, and it really does begin inside of us. It begins with the choices we make about who we are and how we want to be in the world and what we understand about ourselves. And it's important to recognize and not compare ourselves to others. 
I think for me, even though I was so prolific in my 20s, you know, I was doing so much, producing so much, going for such a long time. I never really felt good about anything I was doing and I didn't feel like it was going anywhere. And in fact, it really wasn't. And even though I developed pretty severe health issues very young, they still didn't really wake me up fully to how much I was not in control of myself or my life and how much of my own power I was giving away and how much I was looking to the external world to validate me and my worth as opposed to looking inward and creating that for myself. And this is tied in with weight and I think this is a sensitive subject because obviously it brings up a lot of emotional issues for people, you know, and this, the current environment, um, climate, uh, culture, what have you, is becoming more fat positive, um, which is something that, you know, I, I guess I bought into a bit. And I don't want to say buy, bought into as if it isn't a good idea to, you know, address the discrimination and irrational hatred that is geared towards fat people specifically. You know, just because somebody has fat on their body, no matter how much, it doesn't negate their value as a person. It doesn't tell you everything about them. Uh, there could be a number of reasons why. Although generally speaking, a lot of it has to do with mental health and the fact that food has become this thing that is very emotionally laden. It's very hard for people to um, really understand unless they go through it. And at the same time, a lot of people who are going through it are in denial as well, or it feels hopeless because it's, it's such a big struggle. You know, we need to eat every day. And if we're not eating, um, we suffer. And, you know, it's, it's a very, like I said, it's emotionally taxing for people who are dealing with weight issues. So I think it's important to be careful about how we go about discussing these issues as well, because people still, even though it's you know, even though this has become more politicized, even though the culture is becoming more fat affirming, even though we see more fat people um, in media represented, which is important. I think it's important to have representation, period. And I really do struggle when we see like fat models, um, just modeling clothing, you know, and people have an opinion about it, like, oh, they're not healthy. Like, well, so, People are fat. People, fat people want to see what clothes might look like on their bodies. You know, fat people exist. They don't want to look everywhere and never see themselves. But anyway, that's a maybe another topic. But I do feel like really irritated with that kind of thing. Um, I just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's, there's a lot of irrational hatred of fat people and a lot of people that project a lot onto fat people unknowingly or knowingly. And that's another ugly thing in this culture that also ties into the emotionality about it because there is a lot of rejection and that leads to a lot of self-hatred within fat people as well. I mean, I, I learned it growing up and as I started to put on weight, my father would be like very demeaning about it, you know, and it's at the time it was very hurtful for me because like, you know, <laughs> he was fat too and he was also my parent, but it's also understandable like as an adult looking back and understanding that that was just his self-hatred projecting out and he didn't like to see that um, you know, the cycle was continuing 
but how could he break the cycle? You know, that wasn't something he could do, you know? He, he never could, he died fat, you know? He died morbidly obese, despite going through a massive weight loss, you know? Like I said, he never healed that relationship. And I wanna say this to people as well, who may be struggling with this type of matter because we get so many negative, we get so much negative feedback from the culture. We hear so often that diets don't work. Most people gain back the weight they lose. You know, yo-yo dieting is a problem. There are all these health issues with that. What I wanted to say in terms of what I put out here about this and talking about this is that weight loss is a journey, okay? We keep hearing, we hear those messages like, you know, oh, if you lose weight, you'll gain it back. Sometimes that does happen, you know? I've, I've definitely had that happen where I've gone through a significant weight loss a couple times in my life, kept it off for a while, and then it started to come back, okay? And I think that's just something that if you struggle with an unhealthy relationship with food is gonna happen. And it's not something that's cured in a single weight loss. It's not something that's cured a single time you start changing your habits, okay? It's something that, you know, when you go through some traumatic, you might go through something traumatic, you may be triggered to turn to those comfort foods that have always been there for you during times of stress, you know, or, you know, meals you associate with good times. Those things have a lot of emotional value. And then, of course, I haven't struggled with the binging, at least not since I was a child. Um, so I can't really help people who are struggling with that kind of thing, but there are people who have like literal disorders and they can't, they're totally out of control. So, um, that hasn't been my struggle so much, but my struggle has been with what I eat, sometimes eating too much. And of course, like coping through maybe eating foods that aren't the best for me. Um, and learning moderation, again, it's like I said, this is a journey. It's not something you pick up once. It's something you have to learn over time. And I want to really encourage those of you who are overweight or have been or struggle with like weight loss itself, you know, maybe you've been like me a couple of times, you've been up and down and up and down. <clears throat> Just because you fall off the bike doesn't mean you shouldn't get back on. And it's worth it for your life and your health to try and keep going and try to keep maintaining an, a weight that is good for your body. Um, so I want to talk about my most recent um, weight loss because I have at this time lost 45 pounds. Um, and that is good. I still have a little more weight to lose to hit my goal about 20 more pounds. And I think that will be a good weight that I can maintain. But, um, you know, in the past when I've lost weight, like the picture that I showed you at the beginning of this video, I had people like being very negative towards me at that time when I first lost weight because I lost um, over a hundred pounds and I lost it over a year. A lot of it did, once it got under like 230 pounds, um, the weight started to come off pretty rapidly. Um, and part of that was due to some things I was going through. I was experiencing some heartbreak. You know, I had my heart broken for the first time really in my life and um, it just became easier to kind of, I guess in that time, be restrictive with what I ate. Like it wasn't anything to me to give up this or that because I felt so empty anyway. Um, and I just, you know, I felt so discouraged with life. It was one thing that I could kind of do, I could kind of control. So 
Um, that weight loss actually lasted quite a while. I was able to maintain that for several years and I was very proud. I was like, oh yeah, I'll never get fat again. And then the pandemic happened and I got COVID and I became bedridden for a while. And after that particular illness, um, I never really could recover my mobility in the same way as before. Something had kind of changed in my body where I couldn't walk as well as I could before. And I don't know if it was just the lack of mobility for the weeks that I was in bed, but that did something to my legs, but it really became difficult. And since then, you know, I shifted from working where I was standing most of the day to working a job where I sat and I was working from home. And I think too, being the, the pandemic kind of had me coping through, I think, turning again to foods that were maybe not so healthy. So I put on some weight. And at first, I didn't think much of it. I was actually kind of looking at myself like, hmm, I'm kind of liking how thick I am. And you know what? I've never been thin. Even after I had that like massive weight loss, I um, still was, I think at my lowest, I was like at 170 pounds. Now, I am a tall woman, so keep that in mind. Um, and, but I was still, you know, wearing plus size clothing. I was still you know, not thin. I still had, you know, fat on my body. I still was round, but I mean, people were very kind of like, oh my God, you're skeletal. Like, of course these were fat bitches saying that stuff too. <laughs> so keep that in mind. A lot of that is jealousy too. You know, a lot of the times people don't want to see you do well. They don't want to see you have a better life because they're so miserable. They want to see that reflected in the people they interact with. And if you suddenly start to escape from their little fat, miserable life, I'm being harsh because, you know, it's the truth here as well. Um, but I mean, it did hurt me because these were people in my life that I cared about and looked up to in some ways or that I, you know, commiserated with and then to see them kind of be unhappy for me because I like got down to a above average weight. <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm not thin. I'm like, I'm not even thin. <laughs> you know, I'm, I, it's not like I'm here. I'm not skeletal here, you know? So for me, it was kind of a mind fuck to see that sort of animosity, you know, even though I wasn't in any sense, like traditionally thin or even average weight, but I was still being treated that way. But anyway, I, I, I know I said you there, um, putting on the weight again and um, seeing the scale kind of get bigger and bigger. Um, it reached a point last year, I think last summer, where I weighed myself and the scales read at 230 again. I know I mentioned that weight before, it's kind of a significant weight, but I, um, once I saw that and kind of really looked at myself, looked at the fact that I'd, you know, gained several sizes, that I'd put on so much weight over the past couple of years, I got really, I, I just made, I was like, okay, this ends here. You know, I made that decision. I was like, I'm not going up further. I'm going to get this off. I'm going to do this for me. Okay. It was a conscious decision I made that I was like, no more, you know, the, and I don't know what that weight is for you, but for me, that was so jarring to see that number again, to like be at that number again. And I hadn't been there in years. Um, and I was like, I just can't, I can't do this to myself anymore. So I, funnily enough, like after that clicked for me and I was thinking about, okay, how am I going to lose weight? Because, you know, 
my diet hadn't really changed from the initial weight loss that I, not the initial, but the one that I had a few years back. Um, but my lifestyle had changed. It had become more sedentary. I was not needing as many calories in the day. Um, I realized that what would need to change was that I would have to eat less. And then thankfully, I just want to give a shout out because I found this mentor online that I've been working with the past, in the past year, um, Maria. I will link her channel in the description bar here. Um, but she had, in one of our meetings that we had, because she's so awesome, she holds all these great meetings, she had talked about how she maintains, you know, being thin in her 40s. And um, a lot of the advice she gave was like, okay, I could probably, I could do this, you know. Um, this is, a, and some of it was really basic, like you don't need to eat three meals a day. Um, and so I, I've done that. I've given up having three meals a day. Unless, you know, it's a certain special circumstance where like maybe I have a date or maybe I have some event I'm going to and there's going to be nice food served. Okay, I'll eat, you know, a third meal, but I try to keep um, the other meals I have that day kind of, you know, more basic. And um, yeah, intermittent fasting was the tool that I implemented. And the weight came off pretty quickly, at least at first, you know, I lost uh, 10 pounds within the first week of implementing the intermittent fasting. So I found, and this was something I actually tried um, several months before, but I didn't really, um, I guess, stick to because I found it difficult. But really the biggest thing I gotta tell you is the decision. Once you make the decision, it becomes easier. And for me, it was like, I guess, seeing that number that I did not like and making the decision in my mind, like, okay, this ends now. <laughs> it kind of prompted everything else in my life to come into alignment with that decision. So I made the decision, I shifted my mind. <clears throat> I started thinking critically about how much I was eating and then, of course, the appropriate tools kind of came my way. So yeah, the intermittent fasting I've been doing since then, and it's cleared up a lot of things for me. Obviously, not everything has been cleared up. I still have pain. I still have um, the kind of issues I've been struggling with since my early 20s, but... I have had reduction in like swelling in my joints. I definitely um, am not retaining water like I was before. Uh, the fasting has helped me sleep better. Um, there, there's just a number of things that it's helped with. And obviously the weight loss has been something that is significant. And it's fasting, but it's not extreme. You know, it's not extreme to have an eating window throughout the day. So I figured out what the appropriate hours were for me. You know, I looked at various methods. I figured out that um, what I could do was the eight hour eating window and then a 16 hour fast. You have to understand that for eight of those hours, I'm likely to be in bed sleeping. And then eight hours during the day, I'd be fasting. And then the rest of the time I was able to eat. And I can't really determine for you, if you are interested in implementing this kind of method, what the appropriate fasting hours for you. But yes, I've adhered to this pretty much every day. And of course, like I said, special occasions, dates, whatever I will eat in the evening time. But generally, um, I just don't have dinner. And you know, for my sedentary lifestyle, I don't need all those calories. That was the other thing about it too, is like, I realized I don't need to eat as much, you know? And something that Maria said about this that I think is really true is that we are encouraged to eat a lot just because for one, I mean, <laughs> making companies money, you know, if we're consuming more, we're making money for these people. 
but also like <laughs> if we're eating too much, we're making ourselves sick. Um, and it is natural, I think, for us as human beings to fast for a period during the day or just to fast for long periods of time. And you have to think about what our ancestors were eating like. Were they having all these meals? Like all the time? N no, I, I think the three meal a day thing, it does work for a certain type of lifestyle. And definitely when I was using my body, like doing physical labor, it was necessary to eat that much. But if I'm sitting most of the day, it just isn't. It just isn't and it's gonna make you sick if you're doing it. It's gonna make you sick. It's gonna make you put on weight you don't need. And it's gonna really like cloud you. And that's the other thing too about eating too much. It causes you to be a bit brain fogged. I know brain fog comes from many different things. It can come from lack of nutrition and it can also come from eating too much. So, uh, but I found that my mind worked a lot better if I do have that small period of fasting, you know? If it goes too far and there have been times where if in the morning I wasn't able to break my fast at the usual time, I have found that I could get a little bit loopy. I mean, that did happen a couple of weeks ago. I think I was, yeah, I woke up late, had to rush to get ready, didn't really have time to eat. I had like a cup of coffee um, and I just figured, you know, uh, I'll have a snack after church and then have lunch when I get home. However, yeah, I got, I got pretty loopy that day. So I think it's important to try and be consistent and eat at the normal times, um, not let your fast go on too long, but definitely, um, even though that happened, <laughs> It really hasn't presented any of those problems as long as I'm being consistent and making sure that I get my two meals and that um, the foods I'm eating too are nutrient dense, okay? That's another thing. A lot of the food we eat just doesn't have what we need. And so it's important that the majority of your diet, meaning like the food you eat regularly, is full of nutrients. And that means eating your meat. Okay, um, that's, your protein is important. It's what builds everything in you. It builds your hair, it builds your skin, it builds your bones, um, and it's also full of nutrients that are easily absorbed. I think too, yeah, in my youth, I didn't even mention this, but I was a vegetarian for a long time. And I do think that that also played a part in me developing a autoimmune disorder because uh, the foods I was eating, a lot of them had, well, they were hard to absorb. Nutrients, they may have been full of nutrients, but they were hard to absorb. I was not getting enough protein, calcium, vitamin D, vitamin B12, all of the things, you know, all the amino acids. Um, so I think my body did start to break down a bit and started to attack itself in some ways. Um, and so I, I have been eating meat for the past 12 years now, but the damage was done and it's not really anything that can be done about that. Um, but yeah, I would say it's very important to make sure that you get enough of what your body needs. And also for me, the thing with the intermittent fasting that's awesome is that I don't have to you know, totally restrict myself. If I want a pastry, I can have a pastry. You know, if I want some cheesecake, one of my favorite things, I can have that. Uh, it's not so much about restricting what I eat, it's about restricting when I eat. And that for me has made a big difference in terms of just keeping consistent because I don't ever really feel deprived. And in the evening, if I feel really hungry, um, I may snack. Sometimes I'll, you know, have something like some fruit or maybe a piece of cheese a couple hours after my usual fasting window if I'm like feeling kind of like, I don't know, desperate or, or just hungry. 
Oh, I bet usually I can just have some tea or some, you know, have something to drink and that'll kind of help satiate it. Um, the thing with this kind of method of eating and, and what I found is it's helped me get 45 pounds off, which is nothing to laugh at. I mean, I've been doing it since fall. Um, and even though it's kind of slowed down, at first the weight came off rapidly and then it kind of slowed down, it's still consistently coming down. And I don't weigh myself every week. I weigh myself every few weeks um, just to kind of keep track. And, you know, it's progressively gone down. You know, even with the holidays, even with my birthday, even with celebrating and having fun, it's consistently been going down. Even if it's at a slow pace now, it's still a practice that is working. Um, because most days you're going to be in a calorie deficit and that's really the only way to lose weight. And for me too, it's helps me with moderation. So, you know, I figure every day is a new day. Um, I eat what I want in that day. I try to make sure that through the week I'm getting enough of the foods that I need. And, you know, I don't think about it a lot. And that for me is important as well. If I have to obsess, if I have to count everything, if I have to do this, that, or the other, I'm gonna just not be able to be consistent. But if I have a practice that is the same daily and doesn't require a lot of thought or work, but works over time, it works the best for me. So um, I don't know if this is something that I would recommend to you. You know what's best for you, but for some of you, especially if you did put on weight during the pandemic, if you did start working from home, um, if your lifestyle did become more sedentary, it might be something to consider. It really might because it could just be that you're eating a little too much. And if you cut out one of those meals every day, you might fare a lot better and it might help with, you know, um, getting the weight off that you lost, or that you gained. Um, so I think yeah, just to wrap this video up, because I know I've been going for 30 plus minutes at this point, I just want to say and be encouraging, you know, there's a lot of discouragement out there about weight. Um, a lot of people will make you feel like it's impossible. It's not, you know, or that it's impossible to lose weight. And it certainly isn't. And it may be difficult because if you have been overweight, obese, if you've been fat most of your life, that has been your default. Our minds and bodies always wanna go back to default mode. So if you somehow end up losing weight, gaining weight back, it's okay to try again, all right? But your body will thank you. It does not do us good to have, you know, while it may be okay to be a little overweight, in the long run, your body does not want to have like 40, 50, 60, 100 plus extra pounds on it. That's going to be wear and tear on your joints. It's going to cause all kinds of other issues, inflammation in the body. And also, we can't participate in life as fully if we're, you know, in this fat cage. Um, it affects, you know, you physically, mentally, spiritually. Um, it's while there's a lot of stuff out there about confidence and, and that kind of thing. And yes, that's important. Like it does eat at your confidence, especially if you're a woman. It's, it's inevitable because the rejection is real. The, the way people talk about fat women is real. The way in which you often get treated as a fat woman like is real and it does have an impact. So ultimately, I want to say if you want to lose weight, I support you. All right. It is possible and it may be difficult but it's worth doing for you more than anything else, more than all the external things. It's about you and your body, your life, your health. You know, it's 
possible to be cute and fat, obviously, but being cute is not what's most important in this life. Um, and over time, you know, the older you get, the longer you have to carry around that weight, the more it's gonna impact you. So if you can make a change, you should. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I thank you if you've stayed with me this whole time to talk about this matter. It is something that I am passionate about. It's something that I think is important. And I do think that you know, just because it has been something that's been a struggle for me in my life and it has been something that's held me back in many ways, I really want to encourage any of you who are thinking about losing weight, you know, um, thinking about getting down to a healthier weight and making positive changes in that direction, I totally support you. Make sure that you do something sustainable something that's moderate, something that isn't gonna leave you feeling depleted. You know, find a practice, like for me it was the intermittent fasting, but find some way of eating and being that's gonna, you know, work long-term because again, this is a journey, okay? It's a marathon, it's not a race. It's not about getting it off quick, it's about getting it off and keeping it off and maintaining it. So anyway, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're new. Um, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.